Let's jump into this. Okay. First Chronicles chapter four, verse number nine. You got it? It starts out like this. And Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother named him Jabez saying, because I bore him with pain. Verse 10. Now Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my border and that thy hand might be with me and that thou wouldest keep me from harm, that it may not pain me. And God granted him what he requested. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much for your word today. We pray, God, that you light would flow today, that you would open up our eyes, give us illumination in the Holy Ghost so that we can have light, and light gives us strength to be able to fellowship with you, to do and to function, and to cause these truths and these promises that we're reading to manifest. So we pray that today. Pray that eyes would be open, ears would be open, hearts would be open, that we could hear, see, and perceive and understand what it is that you're saying. We give you praise. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming, for being with us, for confirming today with signs and wonders and miracles following this word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Well, let's get it started. So here is, we're talking about increase. And it's just something about it. I just want you to just put in the comments, increase. Just put that in the comments. Type that wherever you are. Shout it where you are. Just say increase. 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 And, and this is, we, we, we're, we're getting ready to walk in some very uh, con controversial places. We spent 25 messages, not 25 Sundays, but 25 messages talking about the power of God and the covenant of God. And with the power of God, I hope you enjoyed that, and I pray that that was a blessing to you, and that you were learning, and that you were that the, <laughs> that the testimony of Christ was being confirmed in you, so that you're not lacking in any gift, Amen. Um, but specifically, what I want you to understand is that this covenant, this kingdom covenant that we are founded upon, Jesus says, "This is the blood of my covenant, shed for the forgiveness of sins for many." And this covenant that we are part of is not just for the forgiveness of sins, but it also, oh, let me just stop here and tell you this real quick. Let's let's go here. Let me, hallelujah. I just felt an audible in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Let's do this real quick. Let's go to Luke chapter 22. Glory to God. Luke chapter 22. You know what? Mm. Mm. No, go to Matthew 26. Thank you, Jesus. Look at Matthew 26. Look at verse number 27. It says this, And when Jesus had taken the cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, the disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. So when we talk about the kingdom covenant, and I really want you to get this, the kingdom covenant, the new covenant, the New Testament, the testimony of Christ, all these are synonymous, right? So when we talk about kingdom covenant, what we're actually speaking about and talking about is this agreement and this charter, dare I say, almost like a constant, not literally constitution, but it's a, a mode of relating to God and being God's people. It's literally the, <laughs> the precepts and the standards and the commandments and the statutes and the ordinances that God has, has laid out to say, this is how you will relate to me. This is how you will know me. This is how you will be known by me. And this is how you will effectually operate and exist in the earth. So he laid it out. It's a covenant. It is a document. It is a, a, a document in the sense of not that it is written on paper, but it is in the spirit. The word of God says that he's written this covenant on our hearts and also on our minds. Hebrews chapter 8 and Hebrews chapter 10 declares that. And so this kingdom covenant is not necessarily you can't go to a museum and see it. You can't pull out a scroll and see it. But we do know that it is a covenant, that it is based in the spiritual dimension, that it also is based on the word of God, but it includes that and so much more. 
But it, nevertheless, it is a spiritual document. It is a spiritual agreement, a covenant, a way that God says, I will relate to you and that you will relate to me and how you will exist in the earth as you represent me. And so this is the covenant. Now, what Jesus tells us in Matthew 26, verses 27 and 28, is that this covenant, this his blood, glory to God, which we ought to drink, which we recognize when we receive communion. He says it is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. And a lot of times people think that when we talk about the kingdom covenant or the new covenant, that is specifically and solely about forgiveness of sins, that it is about becoming clean. And I love the song from Hezekiah Walker from 1992-93. Won't he make you clean? Inside, right? I love it, right? And thank God that he cleanses us, he washes us, that we have been renewed, we have been regenerated. But what you need to understand is that the kingdom covenant, the new covenant, is not about, is not explicitly about forgiveness of sins. Oh, yes, Lord. It's not about that. It's not about that. In exactly the same way that the, low, the Old Covenant, the Mosaic Covenant, the Old Testament was not about explicitly the forgiveness of sins. See, you can't get mad at me when I say that. You can't be like, oh my God, how could he say that? It's not about forgiveness of sins because forgiveness of sins, right? That's what. See, when you have a religiosity-based mindset, you will take away and you will begin to shrink and to eliminate the full scope of what God has accomplished for us through Christ Jesus. And what you will find is that the new covenant is not just about being clean from sin. That is the starting point. Come on, say it's the starting point. It's the starting point. It's the starting point because you cannot enjoy covenant benefits. You cannot enjoy covenant life if you are not first forgiven and cleansed from sin. Hallelujah. Forgiveness and being cleansed from sin is not the objective. It is the initiation into relationship with God. Glory to God. Come on. The Bible tells us this, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we walk with God, but yet we walk in darkness, the word of God says that the truth of God is not in us. And we're liars and we're deceiving ourselves. Because why? Is because if I'm going to have relationship with God, if I'm going to experience this light based life, if I'm going to walk in what God has for me, his many plans and his purposes and his innumerable thoughts that he has toward us, then the first thing that has to happen before any of that can occur is that I have to become cleansed. I I have to become washed. I have to become made over. And thanks be to God for the blood of Jesus. Come on, what can wash away my sins? I love the song that says nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can can make me whole again nothing nothing you ought to shout nothing but the blood of Jesus oh yeah come on it, it can take although your sins be as scarlet come on that God can wash you and he can cleanse you with his blood and he'll make you white as snow this means that it doesn't matter where you've been it doesn't matter what you've done it doesn't matter what you've been caught up in it doesn't matter how many lies and how many chains and how much bondage the devil has you caught up in I'm telling you that the blood of Jesus can free you can cleanse you and can make you over again oh you don't believe me what the blood of Jesus did symbolically with the children of Israel is that when they came up out of Egypt the Bible says I need you to do something for me I I, I need you God said I need you to take a lamb a a, a spotless lamb and, and I need you to sacrifice it and I need you to put the blood of the lamb over your doorpost I I need you to use this blood so that I can identify whom is mine and whom isn't and here's what you need to know is that the Israelites at this time were 430 years a slave they were in slavery they were in bondage they were in oppression they were in the middle of a system that had 
beat them down, that had broken them, that had detached them from the very purpose and the very cause from that which they were born for. To walk in this promised land that God promised their forefather Abraham, I would give to you and your descendants. But they were in slavery. They were in bondage. And this bondage to Egypt represents bondage to sin. This wasn't just any kind of regular bondage. This wasn't where you get nights and weekends and vacations. But this bondage is a bondage, my God, where God is saying that you are going to be stuck. You are going to be not who you ought to be. Where you're caught, you're blessed on your DNA, but your physical life don't represent it. Where you're blessed and you're favored in the spirit, but in the natural, you are being uh, disfavored. In the natural, you are being oppressed. In the natural, you are being abused. You're enslaved. You're, you're having to make uh, uh, bricks without straw. You're, you're having to work overtime, and, and there are no days off, no times off. There, there is no leniency for you because you are stuck. You are bound, and that's what sin is like. Sin will take you out of what God has called you to be, what God has intended you to be, and it'll make you become something that you are not. It'll turn your life upside down. It will cause your life to be inverted or the opposite of what God's plans are for you. But the blood, oh yes, Lord. Oh my God, because there's only one thing Oh, hallelujah. That can get you out of your situation. It's, it's only one thing that can get you out of an existence that does not match what God has for you. It's only one thing that can cause the plans of God and the reality that you are in to align and come together. It's only one thing, and that is the blood of Jesus. Oh, because it's the blood. It's the blood. Come on. That initiates and causes you to walk in a level of forgiveness of sin yeah because the blood of the lambs that the israelites had to place over their doorposts the bible lets us know that it was a it was a symbol of what god did through jesus christ the apostle paul says that jesus has become passover for us a passover lamb for us so it is through his blood it is through his life it is through his sacrificial death that we are able to step out of bondage, out of the bondage of the devil, out of the bondage of alcohol, out of the bondage of drugs and weed, out of the bondage of, of, of instability in the mind, out of the bondage of anxiety, out of the shackles and the chains of oppression and rejection. Come on, out of the limitation of depression and despair and hopelessness. It is the blood of Jesus that gives us the ability to be cleansed and to made to be made new so that we can walk fully in the light you ought to thank God for the blood of Jesus you ought to thank God that come on that there is something that can bring you out there is something that can pay the price for what the enemy is holding you hostage for there is something that God has established and released that can bring you out of whatever you in I don't care what you're stuck in right now I don't care what habit you have it doesn't matter what cycle of sin that you are in that you find yourself in it don't matter how dark the clouds are are above you i'm telling you the blood of jesus oh yes lord the blood of jesus come on we'll bring you i need you to shout the blood of jesus oh come on shout it like you've shown up sanctified shout the blood of jesus Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. It's the blood of Jesus and that devil is a liar. I'm telling you that it's the blood of Jesus that once it's applied to your account, once it's applied to your life, I'm telling you that God is able and God is willing, glory to God, to cause you to experience a liberty and a freedom. Hallelujah. That you have never known ability to walk free and ability to be able, come on church, to be have the past behind you, have your chains and your challenges behind you, have limitations behind you. Glory to God. Come on, say the blood of Jesus. It's the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus, Jesus says, is shed for the forgiveness of sins for many. For many. For many. But you'll notice this, that, that although the blood will liberate us and free us from the custody and the jurisdiction or the bondage of the devil, 
But what we also find, though, is that we still have to walk in the promise. Yeah, we still have to walk and to possess the promise, forgiveness of sins, for being cleansed and released from the custody and the chains and the bondage and the limitation. Glory to God. And the custody of Satan is great. It's necessary. It is good. It is right. It's wonderful. However, it does not grant us the promises. Again, you can look at this story, the example of the children of Israel. Although they have been freed from Egypt in chains, they no longer were bound. They no longer had wicked oppressors who, who increased their tasks more and more and afflicted them more and more. They were free from that. that those days were over. The, that, that time period was over. They were released. But yet they still had to journey to possess the promise. And here's what I'm trying to tell you is that although the blood of Jesus will liberate us and free us from sin and death, it is through covenant living and obedience to God that we are able to possess the promise. This is why I tell you when it comes to covenant living and Jesus says this is the blood of the covenant, which is shed for the forgiveness of sins for many. It's not the totality of what the covenant is about because it is the forgiveness of sins that allows us to pursue and to possess the promises of God, the purposes and the destiny that God has arranged and ordained for his people. So when I tell you that it's not just the forgiveness of sins, that's the end all be all. That is the initiation. As a matter of fact, Jesus, when he was preaching and he was teaching to Nicodemus, the, the, the religious leader of the day, one of the religious leaders, the man came to him at night in John chapter three and said, Rabbi, we know that you're from God because nobody can do the things you do unless God is with them. And, and Jesus looked at Nicodemus and said, yeah, you're right. But he says, truly, truly, I tell you, you must be born again, because if you're not born again, watch, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Notice this, that being born again or having your sins forgiven and being regenerated and renewed is not the possession of promise. It is your ability to enter into the realm or to the space where you can possess. It's almost like being able to go into a store like you, you can go into the, the most expensive store that you want to. You can go to get a dealer. Matter of fact, you can go to a Rolls Royce dealer people and, and, and you can look at the cars. You can even test drive it. Right. But, but you can't take it home if you don't have the money. You, you got to be able to possess it. See, you, you can be in the place. But just because you are in the place doesn't mean that you will possess it. And so this is what Christianity and modern Christianity specifically has almost boiled down to. We're, we're, we're in the place of destiny. We, we are in the place of the kingdom of God. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We are in the right place. But, but if we don't possess it, my God, with, if we don't have the faith, if, if we don't have the obedience, if we don't have the submission to God, then we can't take home what we're in the store looking at. I need you to have, have I need your help tonight, today, because you can be in a store and you can look and you can window shop all you want to my god you can try on clothes all you want to but you cannot possess if you don't have the money and i'm telling you it's the same in the spirit just because we are born again we are in the place where we can access what God has for us. We can access and we can obtain what God has planned and promised. But I need to have the faith and my covenant lifestyle so that I'm able to possess it and to take it home. Glory to God. And I'm declaring that this is going to be a season where you are no longer just window shopping in the spirit. I'm declaring that this is going to be a season and a time of your life where you are no longer just watching and seeing other people being blessed and, and seeing other people moving in the things of God. But I'm telling you that this is going to be a time where you're going to be able to put your hands on it and to receive it for yourself. I'm declaring that your season is changing. Your life is changing because you are going to become committed like never before to kingdom life and following after the things of God. 
Come on, say amen if you believe that right where you are. Come on, shout, it's my time. My future is changing. My story is changing because I'm going to possess. I'm not just going to look and say amen anymore. I'm not just going to shout about what God has given me, what God, uh, Jesus has obtained, but I'm going to shout because I'm possessing it. I'm going to shout because it's coming into my house. I'm going to shout because God, hallelujah, is releasing his promises in my life and I'm going to get it. Come on on shot i'm gonna get it glory to jesus y'all want to have church today or not nah? I mean, come on hallelujah glory to jesus i'm, I'm gonna get it you're, you're gonna get it yeah glory to god you no longer window shoppers no longer just being in there trying on stuff no longer just looking at your neighbor who's blessed no longer hallelujah just being able to see it from a distance but i'm declaring to you in this month of july that you are going to begin to taste oh taste and see that the lord is good you're going to begin to see and experience the goodness of god in the land of the living Hallelujah. Back to the point. Salvation, forgiveness of sin brings us into the place, the realm where we can begin to experience, to enter into, and to obtain these promises that God has for us. Thank you, Jesus. Again, one of my favorite scriptures, Hebrews chapter 6. My God, it's a banger in the Holy Ghost. Hebrews chapter 6, glory to God, verse number 12 says this, that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. You see here again, we see that just because you are born again, just because you are forgiven of sins, just because you are cleansed does not guarantee you, does not give you the promises. It's through faith and patience you obtain, you possess, you access, you acquire the promises. Come on, say hallelujah to that. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And so when I tell you that kingdom, when Jesus says this new covenant is not just about, when I tell you that the new covenant is not just about forgiveness of sins, hopefully you can see why. And I'm not trying to belittle or to, to, to degrade what Jesus has done for us, but I'm trying to tell you and show you that your forgiveness of sins puts you in the place where you can be in the game, where you can begin to be eligible to obtain and to receive these precious promises of God. So covenant living and covenant life is not just about forgiveness of sin, but one of the benefits is, is that it comes with promises. <laughs> Hallelujah. It comes with an expectation of increase. Come on, say increase. Increase. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Don't worry. Oh, We're going to do this today. Hallelujah. I've been feeling like preaching all week. Hallelujah. So watch this. So. The Lord has given you a covenant that is filled with many diverse things, one of them being that of increase. And when I say increase, I'm talking about growth and expansion. I'm talking about more. <laughs> I'm talking about God taking what you have right now on any level and causing it to be expanded and expanded and expanded even more. I need you to say increase, increase. This, this is the path. This is the plan. This is the agenda of God for the church. Increase. In increase. This is a, a, a spiritual effect of walking with God and obeying God. Increase. I need you to shout increase. Uh, because this month we are going to be pressing into it. This this month we're going to really, I'm telling you that I'm, I believe that there is a spiritual focus on increase for your life. For this church. My God, come on. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. 
I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time, says Isaiah chapter 60, verse number 22. Increase, come on, is the name of the game in this season. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, church, that you ought to recognize this because this is your covenant effect. This is a covenant benefit. Come on, let's look at Psalm 103, the 103rd Psalm. Here's what it says. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Watch this. And forget none of his benefits. It is so interesting that God's kingdom comes with benefits. This is important for you to know is that as you serve God, you ought to expect benefits. Come on, somebody shout benefits, benefits, benefits. Watch this. Here are some of the benefits. Number th- Verse 3 says this, who pardons all of your iniquities. That's a benefit. Who heals all your diseases. I know that's a benefit. Who redeems your life from the pit. There's a benefit. Who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. There's another benefit. Watch this. Who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Come on, benefits. Glory to God. And see, what the devil wants to do is he wants to keep you blinded to the fact that you are entitled to kingdom benefits as you walk according to covenant law. Glory to God. As you pursue the kingdom of God, you are entitled to benefits. Yes, Lord, this is why the Bible says Jesus summed it up so briefly. He said in Psalm, sorry, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, he says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Watch this. And all these things shall be added to you. What things? The benefits, the food that you eat, the house that you sleep in. Come on, the things that are necessary to your life. Ask Adam the help me that you need for your future and your purpose. Whatever you need, God says, when you walk according to kingdom, benefits are added to you. Glory to Jesus. Come on. Uh, and you got you to gotta know this. You have to know this because the devil will try to rob you and he will try to keep you ignorant from your benefits. My God, my God, my God. Glory to Jesus. Oh, I feel like having church here today. Mm-mm-mm. Bless the Lord. Come on. So benefits are my portion. Come on. I need you to really say this. Benefits are my portion. Thank you, Jesus. Benefits are my portion. What's your portion, church? Benefits are your portion. Glory to God. And so we have a God who who gives us benefits. Man, this is so good. This is so good. So benefits. And so what the thing the Bible says is that he, he fills our years with good things. I love this. <laughs> so that our youth is renewed. Like what? Like the eagle. My God. My God. Boy, I'm telling you, <laughs> boy, there's an anointing today that somebody's getting ready to walk into a new thing. Somebody's getting ready to walk into a new thing. In the name of Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you. And so these benefits, church, are, are your portion. And one of these benefits is the benefit of increase. I, I want to I show you something here. Mm, mm, mm. Glory to God. <laughs> I want to show you something here. Let's go to Genesis chapter number 24. Look at verse number 35. Look at 34. We'll start at 34. Here is a story of uh, Abraham's servant, Eliezer, going to find a wife for his son, Isaac. Verse 34 says, when he meets the people who would become, thank you, Jesus, the family and the wife of Isaac, here's what he said. He said, verse 34, so he said, I am Abraham's servant. 
Watch 35. And the Lord has greatly blessed my master so that he has become rich. And he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and servants and maids and camels and donkeys. So what did God do? This is a covenant benefit that God made Abraham rich. You have to see this. Why did God make Abraham rich? Because Abraham was walking and in line with God's covenant promises and covenant blessings. When you live a covenant life, listen to what I'm telling you, you become entitled, glory to God, to receive and to walk in increase. <laughs> glory to God. Come on, that's what happened to Abraham. That's how Abraham was able to become blessed as he was. Yes, Lord, that's how Abraham was able to begin to expand and to grow because this blessing, this of covenant increase was upon him. It's a covenant of increase. Come on. Yes, Lord. All right. Hallelujah. I got to move on. Y'all don't want to have church. Watch this. Look at Psalm Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 17. One of my favorite passages of scripture. Come on, say I'm in a covenant of increase. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 17, it says it like this. God says, otherwise that you may say in your heart. Well, let's look at, mm, well, yeah. Otherwise that you may say in your heart, my power and the strength has made me this wealth. Verse 18, but you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you power to make wealth, that he may confirm his covenant, which he swore to your fathers, as it is to this day. Oh, my God. So here's the scripture is telling us that this covenant, the idea, the ability to increase, to make wealth is not based on you. It's not based on your abilities, but it's what God has given as a covenant effect, as a covenant benefit. It is you are in a covenant of increase. So God says, I don't want you just to exist, but but because you're my people, because you are my sheep and, and the, my people and the sheep of my pasture, God wants to bless your life. God wants to fill your life with increase. Oh, hallelujah. Man, I'm telling you, listen to me. <laughs> oh, God, I'm telling you, I'm about to, we about to take off. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Watch this. God has made it possible for you to experience increase in every area of your life. That's very simple, but I really need you to get this, that there is no limitation in your life. Let me put it like this. There is no boundary of where your life has to stop. You hear what I'm telling you? There is no boundary for where your life has to stop, to where God has to stop in your life. There is no limit. You say, well, I've, I've, I've made this much, so therefore God has to stop. No, there's no limit. Come on. You don't believe me. Watch this. Look at Isaac. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12. It says, Now Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. And the man became rich and continued to grow richer until he became very wealthy. For he had possessions of flocks and herds and a great household so that the Philistines envied him. Watch this. The Bible says he continued to grow richer. I, I need you to get stuck on the fact that he continued to grow he, he continued to grow. It don't matter where you are. You could be the richest person in the world. But I'm telling you right now, when the covenant of increase is upon you, you will continue to grow. My God, come on. We're going to continue to abound. It says be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I'm telling you, there are no limits. There are no barriers in the kingdom of God. 
Oh, nobody in my family has made more than this. Nobody in my family has done more than this. There's no churches that I know that have grew larger than this. Blah, 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 blah. I'm telling you that there is a covenant of increase upon your life if you will receive it, if you will walk in it. Isaac continued. He said the man became rich and continued to grow richer. I'm telling you that <laughs> there is no barrier. There are no limits. There are no boundaries that God is trying to place over your life. Any righteous goal, any righteous objective, any righteous thing that God has, there are no boundaries. How much love can God can you can you can you receive? There's no limit from God. The love of God. Is there a limit? No. What about this? How much joy? Come on. Unspeakable joy. There's no limit. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How much of God can you perceive? Unlimited. Do you hear what I'm telling you? In the kingdom of God, there's a covenant of increase and there is no limit. Think about this. Jesus's kingdom, the Bible says it shall know no end. It's going to grow and grow and grow and its kingdom shall have no end, no barrier. I'm saying this because you've got to know that what God has for you is the similar capacity. Boy, I'm telling you that the joy in your marriage is going to be no limit. Hallelujah. I'm saying that the love that's in your family is going to be no limit. It's going to continue to grow that oneness. And see, the devil is a liar because we think we got to have toxicity. We think we have to have hard things in our families. But no, kingdom way. Come on, says God's, come on, it will be joy that's unlimited. It will be love that is unlimited. It will be life that is without limit. It will increase more and more. Mm. Hallelujah. Come on, say I receive that. Thank you, Jesus. Watch this. Psalm 115, verse number 14 says it like this. <laughs> May the Lord give you increase, you and your children. I love the King James Version of it. It says this. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. <laughs> Come on. You, do you hear what I'm telling you? I'm telling you that we're getting ready, that we are binding and rebuking every lie of decrease in your life. Every lie of limitation and struggle that the enemy would try to place on you, we're saying that today it has to end. It has to break. It has to be cast down because God is declared that you, come on, and your children are going to increase more and more, that he will give you increase, you and your children. Mm. Come on, just say that with me. May the Lord God give me increase. Me and my children. Come on, say, may the Lord God give me increase. Me and my children. Hallelujah. And, and this is the beauty of it, and I'm getting ready to close, is that we'll see in 1 Corinthians, I think, hopefully we've proven that case for you, that we are in a kingdom of increase, that you are a part of a covenant of increase. But, but look at what the Bible says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. Hallelujah. Let's have church, if you don't mind. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Look at verse number seven. You'll see what the apostle Paul is saying. He says then this, well, look at verse number six. He says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. Verse seven, so then neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything. Watch this. But God who causes the growth. Oh, man. Uh, can we read this again? Let, let's 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 do it. Can we do it again? Yeah, yeah. Watch this. Verse six. I planted, says Paul. Apollos watered, but God was causing the growth. So then, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, 
but God who causes the increase. I like what the King James Version says. I just like the way it reads it. Watch this. It says this. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. And, and here's what you need to know. Ooh, we, ooh, we. <laughs> I'm declaring to you, ooh, we, listen to me. Watch this. So the process for increase is a metaphor Paul gives, a metaphor for seed, time, and harvest. Now, I'm not talking about giving money, so relax. But what you begin to sow, and we talked about this in seed time a couple of months ago, you begin to sow the word of God. You begin to sow the principles and the covenant truths in your life. Paul says, I planted the word in you. I planted the word in you. I planted these truths, these covenant truths in you. And then he says, Apollos watered. How do you water it? Well, you water it by letting the Holy Ghost marinate on it. You water it by revelation. You water it by meditating upon it. You water it by, by giving God praise in it. You water it by, by giving it an environment that will nourish it and life to it. Hallelujah. So Paul planted Apollos watered, but watch this, increase was only given by God. And here's why you got to know this, why this is so critical, because increase is an effect from God. I need you to hear me. You, the way that God wants to increase you, I'm saying you can make your own little hustle. You, you can do things your own way and get a little bit of result, but, but, but the kingdom way of increase, it is an effect explicitly from God. It is when God approves. It is when God blesses. It is when God blows and breathes upon your life. So you can get all the teaching. You can get all the watering. But it is God who causes the increase. It, it is God. It is God's favor. It is God's blessing that causes the increase. My God. So, so when we talk about this covenant of increase, you got to understand that, that it ultimately it is God's favor. Oh, yes, Lord, because, oh, listen to me, because it is God who is going to determine the scope and the distance and the size of your increase. My God, you got to hear what I'm telling you, that, that, that it is possible for everybody to get the same word, to be in the same watering, but to have different outcomes in life. You know why? Because it is based upon how not only what you have in you from God, but how you relate to God and how God relates with you. Yes, Lord. The Bible says that Jesus received the Holy Spirit from God and he gives it without measure. Some translations say that he received the Holy Spirit without measure. Why did Jesus get the Holy Spirit without measure while others didn't? It's because how God relates to you. And how you relate to God. It's not just the word in you. It's not just you having watery growth. But listen to me. It is also about how God relates to you and how you relate to God. Again, one of the most critical verses about Jesus, Luke chapter 2, verse 52. It says, Jesus, who grew in strength, excuse me, in stature and wisdom and favor and in favor with God and men. Jesus grew in both stature and wisdom, right? But he also grew in favor with man and with God. Meaning this is that, watch this, ooh -wee, is that you also need, you need favor from God. And here's why, because it is God's favor, it is God's blessing, it is God's touch that is going to cause you, glory to Jesus, to prosper and to grow at a certain level. It is God who gives the increase. So you have the word in you, but it is God who determines the scope and the caliber of what you're going to walk in. Mm. So we can have the same promise, but how God relates to each one of us individually will determine how much of that promise we get. Don't worry. You're going to get all the promise, but, but how you're going to get the promise. But the scope and the caliber of the promises will be based upon how God relates to you. Hear me clearly. The Bible talks about the people with the who were given the talents, right? The servants who became rulers and leaders, and they were given the talents by God. And the Bible says that how each one of them got rewarded was based upon hallelujah the favor and the desirability that the that the king or their ruler had towards them 
So if they did a certain thing well, a certain way, they would get a certain caliber of reward. But if they didn't do it a certain way, then their punishment would be reflective of how they favored and how they responded to the king or to the ruler. I'm telling you this. The principle is this, is that God, oh my God, woo wee, he will bless you. He will give you this covenant of increase based upon, watch this, how you know him and how you are known by him. That's why I've been putting this in here all day. It's through the covenant where we know God and we are known by God. This is why the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that without faith, it is impossible to do what? To please the Lord. For those who come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words, God is saying that there is a way to please me. Is that when you live a certain way, when you operate a certain way, when you begin to operate by faith and radical obedience with joy in your heart, with compassion towards God and the things of God, God says, I'm going to look at you differently than somebody who doesn't. Yes, Lord. Yes, and Lord. So Jesus, glory to God, because he sacrificed the most. He gave up himself the most. Watch this. He received the most favor from God. Because his heart was to do the will of God the most. God blessed him the most. Because Jesus operated in faith and honor the most. God blessed him the most i'm saying to you that it's not just a matter of see watch this mm, mm, mm. you can look at mark chapter 10 the story of the rich young ruler and you'll see that this guy who came to jesus he said teacher listen tell me what i got to do to inherit eternal life he said because from a wee little lad to now i've kept all the commandments i've done everything i'm not robbed from nobody i'm not stolen i've literally kept all the commandments jesus looked at him the bible says and he had compassion on him Right. And he says, you lack one thing. He says, go and sell all your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Man was like, that ain't in the that's not in there. That's not that's not in the book. That's not that's not in the book. That's not in the book. Jesus. I mean, that's not in the law. I've been looking. It didn't say I got to give all my money up. But watch this. See, Jesus knew that you could do all this stuff. But if your heart is not right. If your heart is still not locked in and totally committed to God and obedient and, and, and not just in doing the things, but the, 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 the structure and the, the caliber of your heart is not towards obeying, obeying God, then you cannot fully receive. Do you hear what I'm telling you? So the caliber of your heart matters. The level of your submission, the way that you Say yes to God. Oh, let me help you right here. If, if, if every time you tithe, you're like, I don't want to do this. Hey, I'm, the, I'm just trying to be a blessing. I, and you got all this attitude in your heart and you don't want to do it. Watch this. It's good that you did it, but you're not going to get the same result as the person who has the exact same amount as you, who has the similar situation, comes and gives joyfully and cheerfully. Come on, because it matters to God. The positioning of your heart matters to God because you know why? Because God judges the heart. He doesn't just look at your actions, but he also judges the heart. And so your heart matters. I got to get out of here. And so the Bible tells us that, that, that when in 1 Corinthians that, that you can water and you could plant or you could plant and you could water. But ultimately, God is the determining factor of the increase. So you could come to church and begrudgingly come to church. You could hear the word and begrudgingly say amen you could give and sow and begrudgingly give and sow but but if you do it with an open heart if you do it with a heart to please God if you do it with the mindset says that God I want you I just want to please you I want what you want for me I just want to bless you I just want to adore you and everything and you do what God says for you to do I'm telling you this that the way that God causes your growth is going to be drastically different and better than somebody else my God God is not looking for people who sacrifice with an attitude for people who give and who submit their life going down and still saying, well you know i don't gotta do this this ain't even right i shouldn't be doing this i'm free to do my own thing but i'm gonna do you god no god don't want that come on you don't want even to be in a relationship with somebody who does that every time you do something for them every time you say something every time they got something to say well you know this ain't all that or well you know it should be different like you don't want that 
Nobody wants that in their life. Like, let's just keep it real. Nobody wants to experience that. But you think you can come to God and God's going to bless you abundantly and you got to add it to it everything. You got to talk back for everything. You got a, a witty remark for everything you do. Where is your heart? How can God judge you? How can God bless you when your heart, although your actions are good, the Bible says Jesus caught some people, the religious, uh, those who were religiosity, uh, religiosities, those who were trapped in religiosity. He said, you are nothing but whitewashed tombs with dead men's bones on the inside of them. Because on the outside, you look like you're doing good. On the outside, you look like you got everything going on. You're on the outside, you're doing the right steps. But your heart, God knows your heart. And God is looking at your heart to determine the caliber of increase that he can release in your life. Let's have church right and now. My God. And so if God is giving the increase, you got to understand that God is not just looking at what's been planted and what's been watered. But he's going to gauge it according to you your heart the bible says in ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20 it says now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ever ask or think according to the power that works in you notice this this is a covenant of increase that god wants to give you that god wants to place over your life that he says but it's according to the power that works in you. I feel like having church in here that you got to know that when God, hallelujah, when God wants to bless you, he's looking at your heart. He's looking at how you do what you do. He's looking at how you give when you don't have enough. Come here, widow woman. Jesus was in the temple one day and the Bible says that Jesus was looking at everybody and he was measuring and he was judging their giving. And the Bible says, here comes this widow woman who gives all but two pence and Jesus says do you see that woman do you see that woman who gave that two cents she gave more than everybody because she gave out of her poverty she gave out of everything she had she didn't have much she didn't have like the millionaire she didn't have like the doctor she didn't have like the lawyer she didn't have like the scribe or the Pharisee but this woman gave with a heart and Jesus says she will be memorialized forever because of what she did she will always be remembered her giving and her sacrifice because she did it with a heart glory to God to please the Lord and I'm trying to tell you today whatever you do you got to do it with the right heart because your increase is tied to your heart. Your increase is tied to your attitude. When you give, you better come with a smile. You better come with joy. You better come shouting and dancing every time because your increase is tied to your heart. When you get a miracle in your life, albeit a small one, you better come to God and shout it like it was like he just made the world again in six days. Do you know why? Because when you do it you're saying God I love you and I thank you for what you did it may not be as big as my neighbors it may not be as grand as what I read in a book somewhere but God I thank you because my heart is for you my heart is saying thank you my heart is worshiping you fully and completely and what God will do he's going to open up the gates of increase for your life I wish I had a witness in here that somebody can say God give me a clean heart God, make my heart right so that I can worship you and serve you in spirit and in truth. God, give me a heart so that I can give with a right attitude, so that I can love with a right attitude, so I can walk according to the spirit with a right attitude, so I don't just begrudgingly do it, but I can do it in a way that will cause increase to be occurring in my life. You got to go back to Abraham. The Bible says Abraham, when God told him to offer up his son Isaac. He didn't make excuses. He just grabbed his boy, grabbed the resources, grabbed the wood, grabbed the fire, and he went to go find the place where God would have him to worship. Do you know why? It's because when you worship God, when you serve God and you're under a covenant of increase, God is looking at your heart. I know you got the sacrifice. I know you got the wood. But what is your heart like when God, when the sacrifice son says to you, God, we are daddy. I see the wood. I see the fire. But where is the sacrifice? Are you saying, well, son, it ain't right we shouldn't have to do this it don't take all that to worship God but are you saying God son the God that we serve he will for himself 
provide a lamb. I'm trying to tell you that your attitude matters. If you want this covenant of increase, God is looking at the attitude of your heart. Glory to God. And somebody in here is getting a change of heart. Even right now, you're not going to walk away like that rich young ruler who met Jesus and said, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? But you're going to be like the widow woman who gave everything she had to God. She said I'll give it to you and I'm not crying about it because it's God who's keeping me it's God's favor that is keeping me alive it's not my neighbors it's not my family but it's God who is causing glory to God the increase oh and I, I wish I really had my organ today I feel like preaching and you'll find that when we go back to Chronicles yes <laughs> You'll see that Jabez, the Bible says he was more honorable than his brothers. Jabez, glory to God, meaning that he did what God asked him to do. What makes a person more honorable than others is that I do what I'm supposed to do. When nobody is watching with the heart, glory to God, as if everybody's watching. Did you hear what I told you? What makes you honorable is when you do, glory to God, what what you're supposed to do when nobody's watching as if everybody's watching Woo! glory to god and so jabez was more honorable than all his brothers Jabez, glory to God, had a promise that was saying this is all that you can get. Jabez was born into a situation where he was limited and locked up and trapped by what had already been established for his life. But the Bible lets us know because Jabez was more honorable than his brothers that Jabez had the ear of God because it is the eyes of the Lord that are over the righteous and his ears are open to their cause hallelujah and so Jabez he says God because you know my heart is right because I worship you in spirit and truth he says God what I'm going to do now I'm going to worship you I'm going to set up an altar and I'm going to call on the name of the Lord Jehovah Jireh the God who sees before El Shaddai the God where nothing is too hard for you I'm calling on this God God, I need you, the God of my increase. I need you to enlarge my territory. Where I'm at is too small, and your promise, your kingdom, is one that is never ending. And so in righteousness, there is no limit to what you can do for me. In righteousness, God, there is no barrier or boundary for the increase that is on my life. And so I'm, if I'm trapped in a situation... If I'm trapped in a scenario, if I'm trapped in what I was born in, I'm asking on the God who is the God of my increase. I'm saying, God, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Expand the borders of my tent. Make more space for me. Give me more room and purpose. God, enlarge me. God, increase me. Lord, increase my destiny. Increase my anointing increase the blessings God increase the favor in the world God increase my joy increase my gladness increase my goodness increase my money increase my investments increase my real estate increase my deals increase my presence increase my influence would you shout increase and the Bible says that God answered his request and I'm telling you church that God is getting ready to put you in a position where he's going to hear your cry where he's going to expand you on all sides where God is going to take you from a little tiny person to a strong nation and a little one shall become a thousand and a small one a strong nation I the Lord shall hasten it in his time somebody shout increase Hallelujah. All right. Come on, give God a praise. Hallelujah. I don't went over. Y'all mad at me. But I'm telling you, whoo-wee. Glory to God. This is a season of increase for you. 
I'm saying, my God, hallelujah, that as you all bless the Lord, that as you began to do it with the right heart, come on, as you began to honor God, come on, with your heart and with your mouth, glory to God and with your mind, come on, love the Lord God with all your heart, your soul and your strength. I'm telling you that the covenant effect of increase is going to be resting on your life and you can ask God, say, God, take me out of this apartment. It's too small for me. God, God, take me out of this job. It's too small for me increase me God increase my business it's it's too limited it's it's too small and God will answer your request hallelujah hallelujah bless the Lord increase increase thank you Jesus increase I'm telling you increase hallelujah is your portion it's the prophetic agenda of this month, and we're getting ready to walk in it. Matter of fact, we're receiving it right now. Lift your hands right where you are. Mm. Father, we give you praise. We thank you that you are the God of increase. That you have placed us in a covenant of increase. And Lord, we pray right now that a grace... Oh, my God, that was on Jabez, that that would be released upon us this day, that you would cause us to increase all around. In every area that we're facing, God, cause increase to be our portion, increase to be our capacity and our limitation. May we know no boundaries. May we know no limitations. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And give him a praise. My God. Hallelujah. Increase. Increase. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. If you're watching this today, if you're here, if you're watching, if you're here, wherever you are, and you are not born again, you're not a child of God. You're not a real Christian. I'm not talking about just because you've been around church or you went to somebody's church or your grandfather or your daddy was in church or your grandmother or your mom. I'm talking about if you don't have a real relationship with God, a real covenant relationship with God through Jesus Christ. You need to get born again. You need to get saved. Listen, today is your day to fully give your life to Jesus and become born again. You could fake the funk. You could fake the funk. You can fake the funk. And a lot of people think just because they've been around church or they grew up in church that that means you're born again. It don't. Jesus says you must be born again. Come on, you must be born again by the spirit and by the water is what Jesus says. And so today is your day to do this. Today is your day to make this confession and this change in your life that says, God, I'm, I'm for you. God, I'm here. I surrender my life. I surrender my will to you. Come on, if that's you today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Father, I come to you right now confessing that I am a sinner, that I'm lost, that I need you. And I need Jesus and what he did for me. I believe that he was born of a virgin woman. I believe he lived a sinless life. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he rose from the dead with all power. I submit myself to Jesus, to his leadership, to his guidance, to his lordship from this day forward. I give my life completely from this day forward. Everything of mine belongs to Jesus. My past, my present, and my future. My good and my bad. It belongs to you, Jesus. It is yours. I surrender this day. Everything to you. Everything to you. Make me over. I thank you for cleansing me with your blood. 
that is shed for the forgiveness of sins for many. I receive you today. You are my God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that with me and you really meant it from your heart, I'm telling you that scriptures tell us that you are born again, that you are a new creature, that you are not the same. Glory to God. You're not the same. Hmm? You're not the same. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Glory to God. What's going on? If that's you today and you prayed that prayer, I'm sorry about the backgrounds. If that's you today and you prayed that prayer, listen, I want you to put in the comments, hashtag church, hashtag Jesus, excuse me. Actually, matter of fact, inbox us, hashtag Jesus, and your contact information, and we'll be in touch with you to help you walk along this journey of what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be born again. Amen. Come on, today is your day. I'm so grateful for you. Listen, if you don't have a church home, you've been watching, you've been a part of what we're doing, you don't have a church home, you need a church home. You need a place where you can call home, where people know you, where you can grow, and you can be a part of a covenant community. Listen, I'm telling you this right now, ain't no church like Next Level. I'm going to tell you that right now. No church like ours. Church. What God is doing in his church and what he, um, this vision that he's given us that we're walking out, I'm telling you, you're not going to find it nowhere on God's green earth. Amen. So you want to be a part of this great movement. I want you to put in the comments, hashtag church. Glory to God. Inbox us, hashtag church, with your contact information, and we'll be able to be in touch with you, and I will personally give you a call and help show you what it means to, and what it is to be a member of Next Level Church. And so you can be a part of this fellowship, this growing fellowship as we continue to touch and impact New York City and this nation and then the whole world. All right?